16 Minutes of Care is a podcast based on the care principles, a strategic framework that reveals how brands create impact by caring and, as a result, grow their business. In each episode, Isabel welcomes a company executive who explains how care has helped their business grow successfully and sustainably. Welcome, 16 Minutes of Care, the new podcast by the Care Principles. Today, my guest is Brechtje van den Berg. She is the senior design engineer at Secret, a Dutch company that makes wallets. Welcome again, Brechtje. Thank you. For this third episode, I would like to dive into care for people, care for your own people, uh, because I find it very important when you have values, when you have a strong culture that you really apply this in a good way internally because your employees are your first brand ambassadors. Now, I would also like to talk a bit more about the power of family-owned companies. Maybe 10 years ago, small companies were looking at the big corporations, thinking that they were the example and good talent and people that were very bright when they, um, uh, after their uh, university studies, they were always going to the big corporations. But today I'm really convinced that family-owned businesses, they really have a lot of value to give and they really have a differentiating story to bring to, um, to young people, to, to young talent that comes on the market. Um, so we see this or we might see this shift, I'm not saying that we are there yet, we might see this shift today that um, as a family-owned company you get better, uh, you have a comp competitive advantage towards corporates. Now, when you look at Secret, and again, I know you're a designer, you're not working for uh, people, uh, for the people department, but how are you trying to hold on to talent, to the best employees, you're growing fast, but how do you do that at Secret? Uh, well, we try to really get, see the potential of people. Um, I think that young people, they are not fully aware of where they're, uh, where they're really good at. Uh, and sometimes it's different when you start working, you say, hey, oh, I really like this. Or you spot the talent and you give them room to see where, where they can work on that in the company. So because it's not a big corporate, it's easy to see what's happening all over the company and uh, change, uh, change direction or shift slowly. Or, yeah. So people, they can really start at a certain yeah. job, but then they can evolve in towards another job. Yeah. So they, they can like experiment. Yeah, they bit. can experiment more, but they also they have the, 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 the capacity and the ability to change jobs more easily in, in, yeah. inside the company. Yeah. And that's yeah, that. and especially in the in the startup uh, phase of Secret, we are more now getting into the scale up. Um, in the beginning, everybody could do. Uh, are you have time? Okay, you can work for us. Uh, whatever job there needs to be done, you can do it. Uh, right now, you see a shift a little bit, like more like specific specialists or professionals, but still there's this open-minded. Uh, um, environment. Environment. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. You already talked a little bit before about the values that you have. Um, you have seven va values. Could yeah. you just repeat them for me? What are the seven values at Secret? Being independent as a company, making our own choices, um, having uh, respect for everything in the world, for people around us, um, uh, together, doing things together um, with our team, with our suppliers, with our retailers. Um, creative, always in everything, look how we can solve it in a different way uh, or in a creative manner. Um, fantastic, we hope, hope people really love our product and uh, that we have a little fan base and we give them the best service. Um, being modest, so not like shouting out it from the rooftops, but people have to decide for themselves. Um, and um, also growth in a responsible way. So small steps every time, every time a little bit better. Not like, yeah, growth sounds like really we want to grow very fast, but we want to grow responsible. And also let the people grow, I suppose, yeah, not just, sure. uh, yeah. just the company. Yeah. Interesting. Small levels. Um, those values, how well do they live inside the company and how well are they guiding, steering um, uh, device for, for instance, working with suppliers? Um, well, when I spot a new supplier, I'm looking for a certain technique. Um, I always go, go there to see like really uh, how they work, how are they taking care of their 
people have respect? Are they, is it an uh, independent uh, company? Um, can they make their own choices or, or are they a, uh, part of a bigger concern? Um, do they want to develop together? Uh, so there are a lot of aspects always like in the back of your head when I'm sitting there on the table or walking um, the factory ground and having discussions with them. Um, and when it doesn't match, then it's very difficult to, to really build a, a long-term relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to know if they can grow with us. Sometimes it's a smaller company or yeah, do, you have to um, trust each other. Yeah, um, you're dependent on each other also. You're dependent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, interesting. Do you also use your values for recruitment, for instance? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the, I think that is uh, one of the most uh, the best way to apply it uh, is to get the right people inside. Um, so yeah, we really check that in our mind when you talk to people and uh, uh, you really feel when it's not a match, and then it helps that you can say, okay, well, this person is not so very modest. It's not good or wrong, it just doesn't match secret so much. Mm -hmm. Because when they don't understand it, then uh, at some point you will not understand each other anymore, or you cannot understand each other's choices, or what you think it's important. So, mm -hmm. yeah, really uh, take care of that. Another thing that is very typical for your internal culture at Secret is that you have this very rational uh, side because a lot of you, uh, the founder, the grandfather, um, you and probably others are uh, engineers. You come from uh, university, TU Delft, so you're very uh, mathematical, uh, mm -hmm. uh, rational uh, uh, driven people. But on the other side, the company also have a very um, um, a spiritual side. Um, how do you use that in the internal culture and how important is that in recruitment? Um, I, think, um, I think it's also there. Um, and when you, um, you recruit somebody in a job interview and you tell something about it, um, I always try to see how somebody is reacting on that. And when some, yeah, when a person is a match, you say like, oh, that sounds interesting. Tell me more about it. And other people, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I go, oh, oh. <laughs> it ain't gonna work for you. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. No, and I think that's, um, oh, so like I said before, that uh, Marianne and René are coming from this world, and uh, Marianne has a background in fashion, which is very different than from the engineering side, of course. So it's in a, it's in our products. It's in our founders, it's in the company, so... It's yeah. this yin-yang that yes. you were talking yeah. about that is very... Yeah. Uh, you're a very balanced company in yeah. that sense because your founders are male and female and coming from the uh, technical uh, engineering yeah. and from fashion and so yeah. you really have these both sides. It's, it's, it's really uh, interesting uh, to see. Do you have sometimes people in recruitment, in suppliers, in retailers that are getting very um, um, annoyed by it or that just uh, get afraid by it because spirituality is something for a lot of people, it's, it's like a vague um, and uh, they might get a bit anxious when you talk about it. Mm. Do people really get anxious? About it? Well, they just don't, do not connect to it. They I guess. simply do not yeah. connect to it. And uh, yeah, then the relationship is, is more difficult to build in a, in a good way. And with our suppliers, we don't really talk about the enormous spiritual, spiritual side of secret <laughs> because it's going about the stuff. Um, but um, yeah, all, all these seven values are, have some spiritual basic uh, yeah. base in them, of course. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Um, about 100 people work at uh, Secret. Yep. Uh, the average age is about 29 years old, so quite young. So a bunch of millennials, I would say. Um, a lot of companies um, that have a wider uh, range of mm -hmm. age uh, in employees, they tend to struggle <clears throat> with millennials because they react differently. Um, what are your insights on, on working with these young people? Can yeah. you give some tips or tricks or share some insights how you do it? Yeah, oh, I, I just checked. <laughs> this is from 29, <laughs> it sh shifted to 33. <laughs> okay. Um, and when I came at Secret, the, the average was 27 years old, I guess. Okay. So slowly so it's shifting. Old. Yeah, that's me actually <laughs> getting it up. Yeah. <laughs> I grow the, together with Secret. <laughs> uh, I work there now for about six and a half years, so. Okay. 
Um, but um, I think the, um, in the beginning it was also a way you have like getting young people in and they have this open mindset. They have no ref reference like it's being always done in this way or that way. Um, so they're very open minded, which is very powerful. And I also think that René Marion um, really made a choice in that because we see that when people come from more corporate uh, cultures, uh, company culture, that it is, um, they have certain um, paradigms in their head or in the, in the way they work. And then it doesn't match so well the way we do things because we make sometimes odd choices uh, as you look from, it, uh, from the outside. Um, and then it's very difficult for these people with experience to match in. But when you have younger people who have uh, less experience in other companies or some a few years work experience, they are more open to changes or doing things in other ways. Uh, and there's also room to, to explore it. And uh, well, as I said before, like, um, yeah, to experiment, what, what is the, where is my purpose really? And uh, mm -hmm. is it more engineering? Is it more design? Or is it maybe in supply chain? Or is it on customer care? Uh, you can shift. Mm -hmm. yeah. You said they, they, they sometimes react to the, to the odd things that we do. Can you give an example of an odd thing? Because I'm curious now. Um, well, not like pushing marketing, like big advertisements. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. And big campaigns is not the way we are used to do our marketing. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a, like a very big marketing uh, a department or something. So you really want to continue this word of mouth and, and yeah. you know, step by step. But still <clears> it <throat> has gotten you in 80 countries. So um, even without marketing, a good product sells on its own, I would say then. Yeah, that's a deliberate choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, 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 the word of mouth uh, is very powerful. In the beginning, Secret had a lot of uh, giveaways and getting people to talk about it. Um, and also really, um, yeah, like choosing the right uh, retailers. So to build also that relationship very strong and uh, over 80 countries we have in a lot of countries, we have uh, agents or distributors working for us and also keeping that in a very good relation so that they select the right retailers. And when they um, love the products, then we will talk about it to their clients when, uh, and we, um, uh, have always this uh, panel display on the counter in the shops with this moving uh, carts in and out, like um, uh, and, um, like Victorinox also has. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and um, this is always a talking piece, and people are waiting at the desk, and then you get you have this opportunity as a retailer to talk about it. So we didn't invest in a lot of marketing, but we do invest in all these displays. We give it to the retailer, so. Um, and that's expensive because that's this expensive. place is an expensive yeah, yeah, piece yeah. of uh, point of sale material. Yeah, so it's a different way of doing marketing, but through the people and uh, through the, by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another thing um, that might seem a bit odd to other companies, and especially I think big corporations, is that you don't have really hard um, sales targets. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. What's the reasoning behind that? Is it... Mm, well, uh, it uh, has a history because in the beginning um, the difficulty was to have enough cash flow, to have enough, well there was not a lot of money, uh, there came orders, then it was the challenge to produce, uh, produce it first and after that you got paid from the retailers of course, so that was like the first four years I think until 2012 that was a uh, challenge. Um, and after that, it was the challenge to uh, have enough products. So uh, there were a lot of um, questions from the market. Um, and they were, come on, come on, come on, can I have you in my shop? But when we don't have the product, we really carefully select all the retailers we want. And when we um, do, yeah, because we had to, to, to choose like this shop or that shop, this one or that one. Um, so. We didn't have the need for setting uh, sales targets and build in relationships. Is that uh, something that the founders want to to keep? Um, yeah, for, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah it's really yeah. in the in the DNA of the company. Yeah. And then three years ago, you introduced um, a holocratic model, um, mm -hmm. a model that works with circles, allows employees to get self-organized. Um, 
Can you explain a bit more about the model, how, what, what it is and how it works? And um, Yeah, Holacracy is a way of um, organizing your, uh, your company uh, instead of like top down with all the uh, managers and teams and getting a whole structure. Um, this is uh, organized in circles and it um, is that you don't have like this real hierarchy in, in lay it's layered, but it's not like being top down. Um, and on certain projects, somebody is, it takes the lead, and on another project, the same person um, can be just like uh, like a follower, let's say. Yeah, you have different roles in it. Different so, roles. Um, all um, all jobs are not uh, in just one uh, job description, but you have different roles, so you can fulfill s several roles in different uh, circles, which are more or less can be departments or can be a multidisciplinary uh, circle, uh, which has which working on the same purpose. Um, so yeah, you can really um, uh, be active in, in different places. So that's for young people also a very nice way to see where they fit best. Yeah, yeah. interesting. And, and the other thing is that uh, a, a important difference is that you have not like one manager for each circle, but you have like a lead link, which is chosen by the, um, the, the circle uh, around it and a rep link, which is uh, chosen by the um, people from the circle. So you have this two-way uh, communication. It's so, always so it's top uh, down and bottom up, I yes. would say. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, yeah, interesting exactly. too. I'd never heard of it, uh, holocratic model. Uh, we'll, uh, I'll dive into it uh, more. Okay, that was it, uh, Brechtje, for the third episode. Uh, let's talk more because there's one more with Brechtje coming up. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening and take care. Want to create lasting impact with your brand while feeding sustainable growth? Check out thegapprinciples.com and see how we can help you. 16 minutes of care is an independent production from Isabel Verstraten, brand strategist, founder of The Care Principles and author of the book Does Your Brand Care? Help us reach more companies who are looking for caring and sustainable growth by giving this podcast all the stars it deserves and by sharing it in your network. Thank you and take care.